Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. This video is going to be a Q&A video. I know it is so long overdue, I apologize. Um, it's just, life has been crazy this last year, so <laughs> I ask for your forgiveness for not, um, you know, doing a Q&A for a long time, to be honest. And uh, so here we are. Uh, I wanted to sit down with you and chit chat. Um, I wanted to also apologize for not um, busting out videos last week. My husband was gone for work, so when he's gone, he's not able to, to help me with the girls. Especially last week. Last week was Raiden's last week in school, and um, so she's officially on summer break. So while he's at work, I have her to help me at least kind of keep an ear out during Carson's nap time for Carson. So I have a couple minutes here to film this video for you. Um, this weekend was Father's Day, or yesterday was Father's Day, so I hope you guys had a great Father's Day with your loved ones and your papas and, you know, father-in-laws and daddies and husbands and all of that. So, uh, happy belated Father's Day. Um, so yeah, I have a Q&A for you guys. If you guys are interested in kind of sticking around and seeing what the questions are all about, then feel free to keep on watching. Um, and let's just roll right on into the video. Also, I wanted to apologize for the glare in my glasses. Um, I've been having such awful migraines lately, and I'm convinced that it has to do with my eyes. <sighs> I don't want to succumb to these migraines. But anyway, okay, first question from Felicia Crystal. What kind of mama food type of diets do you see is good? Entirely sure I understand the question, but if you're referring to um, food that I feed my kids, I love to stay true to organic and natural products. Here in, German here in Germany, the products are so, so good. The food ingredients are just wonderful. Um, and I definitely do, you know, I always check the ingredients list. I actually taught Raiden to, to check what's in our food, um, to always be mindful of it. I never want my kids to be, um, or to shy away from food, but I always want it to be nutritional, um, something that will benefit them, um, something that they need for their bodies and that's pretty much it. I do give them sweets every now and again, definitely not you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, it's definitely a treat. That's exactly what it is. Um, my girls, more so Carson, she only drinks water just because anything else she doesn't like, and I'm totally fine with that. I love my water. Raiden, on the other hand, I do have to force every now and again, um, but she does. She drinks her water. She loves her milk. Um, but as far as food goes, you know, we, we try to have fun. We, we make pizzas at home. We make french fries, but it's all good nutritional food, um, you know, sweet potato fries, organic pizza, organic sauce, meat, you know, stuff like that. If I can have control over, over the food that we eat, it's great, especially when you cook it at home. And then that way when you go out and you enjoy, you know, that's fine too. We don't often go out here in Germany especially, but back in the States we would eat out all the time. So bad. What apps do you use to edit your photos? So, the apps that I use is Snapseed, I use Photoshop Express, I use Visco Cam, I use Lightroom, I use QuickShot, um, LightX, PicFrame, and yeah, that's pretty much my favorites. Pros and cons about being a military wife. The pro is a huge pro is the fact that we are able to move all the time. I am definitely not one to stay idle. I love to move. I love to experience new places, new adventures with my family especially. I love, love, love to open the doors and my girl's eyes to just a whole new world. That is probably the most exciting part of it is just, um, you know, new opportunities to just leave um, and experience something new. Um, the cons about being a military wife, obviously um, with my husband's job, it requires him to be away a lot. Um, he misses out on a lot of things when it comes to the girls. He misses a lot of anniversaries, birthdays, you know, things like that. It's hard to plan things around his schedule just because it's not um, 
it's not a normal nine to five off weekends type of job. So um, that is probably a con, you know, deployments, obviously, um, just the job description itself. I mean, I, it makes me very proud, but at the same time, it's scary as well. How do you and your husband make time for alone time, date nights, etc., with young children? Well, date nights, we haven't had a date night in a long time. Um, it's very, very rare that my husband and I actually get some time to ourselves to go out on a date. And even then, when we do go out, just he and I, we always end up talking about our girls. We always end up saying, you know, how much we miss them. And we always end up going home early anyway. So it's very, very hard. Um, in that sense, but we love, I mean, we love spending time with our girls and that to us is a good time. Um, and for alone time between he and I, um, when the girls are sleeping, like that's our time to watch a movie, that's our time to talk, that's our time to cuddle and, and just be together and present in the moment. Um, Randon does a really, really, really good job and he does it on his own, so I appreciate it. Like it's never something that I have asked him to do. He manages his time very well. So, you know, he wakes up early, but he also makes it a point to stay up pretty late with me. Um, even though I don't last that long because my girls definitely tire me out through the day. So um, I'm not as, I don't stay up as late as I used to. Even if it's just like an hour or two or whatever, um, I appreciate it because I know like he wakes up so early in the morning that I know it's better for him to go to sleep. And a lot of times I'm very mindful of it as well. Like, you know, let's just go to bed. We'll just la we'll just relax in bed. We'll talk and we'll cuddle. Um, and then we'll end up falling asleep anyway. But, you know, we don't really, like, make it a point. It just kind of happens. And, you know, we just know that that's our time together. Do you find it difficult for you and your family to adjust to life in Germany? Um, at first it was a little difficult just because... The culture and the life itself is very different from what we're used to. Um, not to say that it's a bad thing, but um, you know, just the convenience of having stores open at a certain hour. You know, Randon and I we used to run to Walmart at 10 o'clock at night just because it was right across the street from where we were living in Savannah. So we would go to Walmart literally every single day almost, whether it's just to run in, get a drink, you know, grab a snack or whatever. Um, but we don't have that convenience here. So just some things, you know, things like that. Um, it's that's more out of convenience rather than having it be, um, you know, detrimental in the transition phase, I guess you could say. But um, it was it was difficult. You know, the water here is a lot harsh, more harsh than the water in the States. Um, so it's taking a toll on my skin. It's taking a toll on my hair. The shower itself is just the style of it, the style of the toilet, um, the style of the house is different. The storage, like there's no storage in these houses at all. Um, so we've had to buy like wardrobe units from Ikea and you know, just like dressers and all of that. Um, so there's no walk-in closets over here. Um, and there's no, you know, central air. Like there's literally, windows that you can open to the the great outdoors like there's no screens which we had to install um screens but they're it's just it's just different you know they 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 go about things differently which is fine like i said it's not bad it's just it's different from what we're used to so how do you and your husband get over arguments and fights well first of all i am never wrong no i'm just kidding one thing that randon and i do really really well or I, I, I'll take that back. He does really well, is he communicates very, very well. Um, me, on the other hand, he'll ask me over and over and over and over and over again, what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong? And in my head, it's because I don't want to address it and I don't want to argue and I don't want to talk about it or whatever. Um, in my head, I'm thinking that I can, I will get over this certain thing because it may be minute, it may be stupid, um, and I just don't want to, you know, make a fool out of myself for being upset at something so I'll always say you know nothing's fu nothing's wrong I'm fine I'm fine I'm fine but I am one to wear my feelings on my sleeve so he knows when something is wrong um, and he's forever asking you know what's wrong like what did I do and until he gets he gets me to a vulnerable state where I'm like so this is what happened and I'm upset or this hurt my feelings or this and he's just very, very good at nurturing my feelings that way um, and, and being very um, open to communicating. Um, 
which I will have to say that probably helps 70 percent of the time because of his willingness. Um, I'm very much somebody that that tries to um, kind of get over things fast but I'm not that way. I tend to be a person that kind of hangs on to things um, for a while. <laughs> so I, I tell him all the time that I appreciate his willingness to always communicate with me because it's it's normally always him that, that um, he always likes to address the issue and I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I will say that I'm stubborn and I don't like to talk about it. Um, and I try in my head to convince myself that I'm going to get over it, but I don't get over it as fast as I need to to move on. You know what I'm saying? So he's always, always willing to communicate. And I think that's very, very important in a marriage is um, communication. Once I get to that point, I'm very, like, I love to talk about my feelings. You know, reach or find a solution. Um, but sometimes, you know, when I'm upset about something, like, I like to, not like to, but I tend to keep it to myself. Hopefully that makes sense. What advice would you give to newly married couples? Marriage is a choice. Marriage is very, very hard. Uh, Ranton and I have gone through the ringer many times and it is a choice that you legit have to wake up and be mindful of every single day. Um, I know that I love my husband and I know that I'm going to be forever in love with him. Um, sometimes I don't always think the best of him. Sometimes I don't always like the guy but I know that I love him and I think that is important to never forget is to always know that you love that person, that you chose to be with that person and that choice that you make to vow your heart, your life, everything about you to that person, to be devoted to that person um, is, is huge and it's very, very important to know that in those times in those hard times is very important to not forget. Like I said, there are days where I wake up sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, you drive me crazy. You know, and there are times in the past where I didn't think we were gonna make it, but he and I have talked many times and said that, you know, divorce is never gonna be an option. And that's, you know, we're human um, and anything can happen, but I think it's very important to know and to make be mindful of that choice to love your spouse every single day um, despite the hardships that you face and as long as you deal with it together and you keep that open communication going and you address your issues and it, like I said I'm working on it but you address your issues you talk about it you never shy away from those issues you guys are always in tune with how each other is feeling is very very important and ski how do you deal with the times when you're missing all of your family and friends um well for one i miss now don't get me wrong i love my family i miss my family um but randon and i we thrive on being on our own with our kids uh, we love the fact that we can make new memories with just ourselves um, we love that we can make new traditions with just our family um, a lot of times we feel pressure to go back home and I think it's often mis not misunderstood but it's often taken advantage of just because our lifestyle requires us to move all over the place we drive all over the place because I mean what's five hours when you drive ten hours to get from one duty station to the next you know what I'm saying so um, it's it's very rare that a, a five-hour drive would discourage us from going somewhere um, so we're used to that and I think some people may kind of take advantage of that just because that is our lifestyle and they kind of expect us to always return home like oh yeah you know they'll come home or this and that and you know they don't really make the effort to come see us and so that's a little discouraging and that's you know partially the reason why we, we stay to ourselves um, but you know I miss my family and I, I miss them terribly um, and I would I don't see them as often as I would like but at the same time um, the time that we are away I am making all these memories and going on all these adventures with my kids and my husband and the people that I love. Um, and it just, it's a different lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? Um, I love that home will always be home and that we can always return home. Um, but for now, I love just always going, 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 staying busy. And um, 
I think I've accepted that we thrive on this life that we live with our family and um, you know a lot of, some some people need to live close to home and that's fine if that's you but for us we're not those types of people we love our family don't get me wrong um, but like I said home will always be home and we always make it home um, and we don't always get the opportunities that we get while in the military so um, to kind of weigh that it's kind of a no-brainer um, but you know there are times where I wish that we were closer to my mom and you know family to help me take care of the girls because doing it myself all these years like it definitely gets overwhelming at times and I I wish I had you know some help here and there or I wish I could go on a date night with my husband but that's the price we pay for the life we live and to me that's minimal so um, for the time being we're enjoying it and no complaints to be honest um, what are you studying I went to school for liberal arts um, I have a liberal arts degree or I mean not literally because I just graduated but um, how are you finding the shopping in Germany? I actually love it. I have not gone crazy shopping um, just because before we moved here, we got rid of a lot of stuff. Like I know I still have shoes and bags everywhere, but we got a, rid of a lot of things um, just because we didn't want to pack it and bring it all here and then have, you know, because we were, I mean, we were told German housing is a lot smaller, and it definitely is, than what we're accustomed to in the States. So we got rid of a lot, um, and then we moved here. That way we, we wouldn't be, like, completely overwhelmed with all this crap. So I haven't really gone shopping shopping, like, just to get. Um, I usually go shopping with intent, um, and I love it. Are you a use a planner and know how, how your week will go, super organized, or have a general routine and adjust where needed? Or a day by day whatever planner, hope that made sense. Yes, Vicky Moran 017, that definitely makes sense. Um, that depends, that depends on what my week is looking like. I guess I tend to do a projected weekly assessment I guess um, if I know that there are a lot of things going on that week I would definitely plan and um, I love planners I love books I love to stay organized but to commit to that every single day um, is overwhelming for me to be honest so um, I make my weekly assessments and depending on what I have planned for that week uh, will base you know, how I go about organizing for that week. Does that make sense? I definitely could be better in organizing. I'm not gonna say I'm the best organizer. 50% of the time I just kind of wing it and 50% of the time I have some sort of structure. It may not be to the T for every little thing that I do that day or that week, but I do have like a general sense. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, do you plan on visiting Netherlands while living in Germany? I actually, I have cousins that live in Netherlands and um, they are actually mo moving back to the States pretty soon. Um, I fully intended on visiting them before they moved, but I don't, I'm not sure um, if we're going to get around to doing that. Uh, but really the only incentive to go to the Netherlands was for my cousins, but I hear it's beautiful so I wouldn't mind visiting anyway. Any advice for new military spouse? My fiance and I are from Hawaii too and we will be leaving the island for the first time together very soon to live in the mainland. I would love to hear how you adjusted from our small little island lifestyle to mainland lifestyle. Awesome! I moved to Vegas when I was like I think a little older than Raiden so maybe like nine or so. Not quite sure. I was raised officially like I've been I've been on the mainland longer than I have lived in Hawaii officially now obviously and um, to be honest it didn't really take much for me to adjust because as children I think now having children of my own children are very resilient no matter what you do um, I think at the time I had a hard time adjusting you know to, to new cliques new groups new new groups of people at school or this and that um, and sixth grade in Hawaii is like the top um, elementary whereas sixth grade in Las Vegas or the mainland was 
already middle school. And in Hawaii, you call it intermediate, which I think is uh, 7 8th intermediate, and then 9th through 12th is high school. So um, to be on top back in Hawaii and then having to move to Las Vegas and start all over again down at the bottom was hard for a kid. But looking back, I don't think I really had that hard of a time adjusting other than the biggest part was leaving my family that was that was hard for me um, I don't think I really made that connection with the land itself um, being away I developed a more better appreciation for Hawaii and the and and the culture but I didn't really appreciate it at say let's just say Raiden's age back in Hawaii was was my childhood and that was wonderful and fun and I was with cousins and family all the time but where I grew up was the mainland so I'm more accustomed to the mainland than Hawaii goes in fact every time I go back to Hawaii I always I can't like I just feel like it's very slow paced like it's not as quick and fast paced as the mainland so um, I can only honestly stay about a week just because I end up getting very the island fever you know kind of like okay I need I need that fast pace um, but nonetheless I'm so thankful and blessed that Hawaii is home and that I can go back home and visit my family and visit the island and just I'm very thankful that my culture is something as wonderful and as beautiful as Hawaii and um, I will never forget my roots and um, I'm just always thankful and blessed that I'm able to return home. So that concludes this video. I'm actually going to address uh, the rest of the questions probably in another maybe get ready with me I'll, I'll answer the rest. I don't want this video to be incredibly long um, so we're gonna end it here but thank you guys so much for you know writing um, writing your questions and sending them in. I love that there's like a central place where you guys can go and get to know a little bit more about me especially because I've been kind of in and out in and out of YouTube the last couple years that I just want to be more consistent, more vulnerable more open with you guys and so yeah but thank you again definitely leave questions down below in this um, in the comment section so that I can refer back to this video for the future Q&A and address those on that video hopefully that makes sense so thank you so much for tuning in and until next time I will see you guys in the next video Mwah.